Hello, loves, and welcome to Tea Time with Monica. Now, this month, we are going into March, Women's History Month, and I want to highlight some trailblazers I know. If you guys have known me for a while, you know that I have made my mark in the plus industry, doing media at other events. And, you know, this month, I'm going to have some great, great guests that I have touched with and have touched me in my career. So first up today is Marie Dene. She is creator of the Curvy Fashionista brand. And she is just a great trailblazer as a blogger. And she gives great fashion tips, but also she does her best to touch everyone in the community in a different way. So I just wanted to get her on Tea Time to discuss what's been going on with her. And she has the Cultivate Award. And we are going to talk about all the details there. Hi, Marie. Hello, Miss Monica. How are you? Hi. Yes. How have you been doing? You know, I've been good. I actually can't complain. That's good. That's good. Well, you know, I like to kick off every episode with a quote. Okay. So today's quote is, the true measure of our success will be the, the number of people touched and transformed by our success. Now, what does this quote mean to you in everything that you've done? I think it means it's important to pay it forward, mm -hmm. um, but no man is an island and no man's success is individual. It comes from the community. It comes from those, it comes from somewhere else, right? Like there's like a multitude of hands that are helping move someone forward. So it's also that person's responsibility to help the, the next kind of set of folks move forward as well. So, yeah. um, you know, more individually, like I didn't get here by myself. I didn't get here by myself. There were mentors, advisors, um, mm -hmm. friends, leaders, you know, all of that who kind of helped bring me to where I am today. So it's just as important that I give back and mentor others to help them along their way. Yeah. And you've done a great job at that. I remember now audience, we are going to go a little further back and get a little history. But if you know, Marie, you have been to her TCF style expo in Atlanta. And I remember being in the blogger mastermind class and all the gems that you give the whole workbook and everything that was like, you just saying, Hey, I'm, I'm doing it. And I want you to do it. And that's how I feel like you just really bring people up and get, make them very successful. You know, I have made a lot of mistakes. Right. I have made a lot of mistakes. And if I can help one person not make any of those mistakes <laughs> that I've made, mm -hmm. you right. know, I feel like, you know, a lot of it has been, you know, there weren't a lot of tools, there weren't a lot of resources. And it was kind of like, I don't know, we're going to test this and see if it works. Right. <laughs> yeah. Not realizing, you know, that, you know, for me, I came up in a time where a lot of my colleagues were straight size bloggers, beauty bloggers, black, right. you know, the black community bloggers. Like, and so for me, I was often like the only plus person there or the only plus right. blogger there. And so, you know, now fast forward 12 years, I've shifted from being a blogger to now a media publisher. Like right. I am now a media platform. I have, you know, I, I, am intentional on how I redefine where we are and where we're right. going because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm excited. I have like a whole vision, but I also realized like, you know, I wouldn't have gotten here without the help of so many folks right. because like, especially when things were like wild, wild west, they still are a little bit, but there's still, you know, there's some structure, but there wasn't before. Right. I had no idea. You had no idea what you were getting into when you stepped into blogger world. No idea. Wow. None. Well, with that, I can say that class was a big help and I hope you bring it back in some way, but. That's the goal. Okay. I like that. See, that's the type of tea I like. Where's that good tea coming from? <laughs> <laughs> well, I we'll love see. It. I have some, some more infrastructural things that I'm working on to be able okay. to do multiple things and especially adjust to the Rona. And Ms. Mama needs to go. I mean, you know, I'm actually kind of grateful for her in some ways, not the loss of life ways, but right. it, it, you know, it forced me to sit down and slow down 
I think it did that for all of us. Right. And it, and it really just forced me to think through a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And it forced me to innovate um, mm. or think about the things that, you know how sometimes you have these ideas and you file them away in the back of your head and right. you're like, well, and you know, if I had my way, I would totally do this or do that or and right. so now it was like okay now you've got all this time and you've got this opportunity mm-hmm. you do it now and so you do it right right or you know what stopped you know there was just like a lot of clarity mm-hmm. and you really start to kind of weigh what's really important and and really kind of strip down so for me it like really energized and recentered me in a way that I haven't felt in a very long time right yeah i mean I, i've had the same thing happen so i totally totally understand now let's backtrack a little bit because oh. some of my audience may not know even though i don't know how they don't know you because you're wonderful like just tell us how a little bit of just of how you got started and what brought you to now where you're you know you have the media platform you know i have been doing this for 12 years mm-hmm. and it's wild to say that out loud because every day is a new day and so 12 years ago i started this because i wanted to open up a boutique Mm -hmm. and unbeknownst to me like this would become like the machine the the mechanism that i'd be using versus like you know i did open my boutique online for like one quarter like one season and then like i shut it down i didn't know that like i was like it was online, it was like in 2009, and mm-hmm. I'm one woman, I could not handle both. Like one thing had to give, the blog right. off, like I focused there. So um, for me, it really, I didn't know what this was going to become, but I remember knowing like this is exactly where I needed to be. I just right. didn't know. And it wasn't until I moved to Georgia, to Atlanta mm-hmm. area, And I remember one day sitting down and I had looked to my left and it was kind of like, this may sound funny, but I'm going to try to explain it to you. (laughs) Okay. Give give us all of it. Imagine a light shining down a tunnel, Mm -hmm. kind of illuminating a path. That let me know that I was walking in my purpose and I was where I needed to be doing what I needed to do. And so... Like for me, that was just confirmation, especially Mm -hmm. where I was mentally that, that, you know, that I was doing what I needed to do, but, you know, especially, um, over the past, I want to say past five years or so, it's been rocky since I've been here. I've had to learn how to stretch. Mm -hmm. I've had to learn how to grow while taking a blog to like, you know, what, what is the next level of a blog? Like, you know, right. they're like I've always had goals of like sitting next to a who, what, where, and refinery, but just from a plus perspective. But I didn't, right. I didn't know what that really looked like. But you right. know, it was important starting the Curvy Fashionista to provide resource. So no matter what we did, we were going to provide resource to empower and get and um, educate and 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 inspire. Right, right. And, and that's so, exactly what you do. And so like, but with every piece of content, like that was what we wanted to do. I wanted you, I wanted you to be fed without realizing you were eating, right? Oh, I like so, that. <laughs> but I wanted it to feel accessible. I didn't want to feel stuffy or talking down to. It was conversational because, you know, for me, I realized like when, when I started, I wanted the contemporary fashion. I wanted to talk about where to get these brands and where to find them and who's doing what and what right. you know about how this impacts of the access of what you're getting and all of that stuff. I am the nerd. Mm. I am not Marie is not the curry fashionista. The curry okay. fashionista is like the aspirational person who you look up to, like where you can go and get all your information. I right. am not the curry fashionista. The curry fashionista is the reader. Curry fashionista mm. is what you aspire to be. Like, right. a, you know, where you can go, your girlfriend, you can go talk to who's in the know. Right. Like, you know, for me, like, I loved being behind, I love being behind the scenes, writing, strategizing, like thinking about like the big picture of things. And mm-hmm. so 
when I started the Curvy Fashionista, it was really important for me to, you know, keep that. That was my why. Right. So even as we grow, even into 2021, you know, it's really about like, how do we level up on that why? Yeah. I like that. Level, let's level up on the why. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, you've just, like I said, you the platform though, that you have with the Curvy Fashionista, now that you explain it more, I never knew that you took it as you weren't the Curvy Fashionista, that it's supposed to be the reader envisioning themselves as this you know and I, and I realized like for a long time like I'm like oh I'm not the curvy fashionista I would never really like hardline de de define that I would never hardline mm -hmm. like, you know push back on and I'm like oh no I'm the creator of right mm -hmm. I would always be but now that we have like officially moved into like the publisher place like a media platform I have a team I have like you know full-on kind of different things happening all at the same time it's not about me as an influencer, I'm not an influencer in the same way you would go like and look on Instagram, so to speak. Right. right. You know, for me, I, I see myself like, you know, I want to celebrate those influencers. I want to write and feature them. Like, right. you know, yes, I may throw my face on social media every once in a while, but like, that's not, that's just so you know who I am. Right. right. So you know and who's so, behind the brand. Right. Right. And so, for me, I think it was really important to, you know, ask myself, like, because otherwise, like, you know, was I, you know, if I, you know, tried to do the outfit, you know, like posts, I didn't feel like that was true to me. Right. You know, like, I love a good look. We all do. Yeah, but, that's not what, but that's not what, like, moved me. That's not what motivated me. Like, mm. I, I looked at it as so much work. <laughs> I'm like, I want to be over here typing and <laughs> like, I, that was my comfort zone. Right. Or that was where I felt like the most alive. And so, right. you know, for me, I had to kind of navigate because there weren't that many other structures or kind of like, you know, layouts, like kind of how we are that I could follow, for example, like, so it was really about kind of marching and charting my own path in that space. Wow. Well, you've definitely charted your own path in that space. So I just want to ask you like about the, the plus industry. Uh -huh. Let's talk about that. Where do you see it going now? I mean, <laughs> I know you probably get this question a lot, but I feel like, you know, there are a lot of different brands coming up with this is, you know, they have plus here, they have plus there. Like what is plus now? Well, I mean, those are two different questions, right? Okay. So well, let's answer both. Okay. okay. So the first one, where is plus going? I think you're now starting to see it's like kind of twofold. You're seeing like more brands, more straight size brands being more curious, mm -hmm. more open, more receptive to being inclusive. Then you also have like the emergence of quite a few indies and newness and more options, more boutiques, more, there's more right? right. You have more options. And so whatever that means to the, um, to the consumer, you're going to find, you know, and how they, what they want, what they're asking for. So you see now more brand, more, you see the consumer and in the industry and the community pushing and challenging brands to push beyond a size 24. Right. right? So before yeah. it was just the inclusion, right? Up to a 3X. And now the push is now, oh no, you need to carry up to at least a four or five X, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. Um, and so you're starting to see that push. You're starting to see um, the diverse, diversity, the diversification of body shapes and sizes um, to be included in the marketing mix, in the campaigns, in the imagery. So you're seeing that push um mm -hmm. so right now i just see a lot of like you know pushing the next level of inclusion pushing the next level i think you're still going to see the challenge for more inclusion of black and brown women because we've been championing the fashion space in the plus size um as it pertains to plus so mm -hmm. you're you're still seeing that like call out you know you're still yeah. seeing that need for this this our voices to be heard 
and respected in, you know, when it comes to the community and the industry side of things. So, you know, from both sides of the questions, you know, what are we seeing with plus we're seeing more, not enough, right. but we still are seeing more. There's still a long ways to go. We're still in the infancy in terms of the growth cycle because mm -hmm. we haven't even hit or have can, can adequately, adequately predict where the plus size industry is going to be in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, that it's still growing at like double the rate of straight size fashion. So like, what does that mean for us? Like there's still so much, like so much space, so much room to play in as what is plus. I mean, still, it's still like 14 and up. Yeah. But I don't think, you know, cause it's funny, you know, in, in like a straight model world, you know, we hear all this, you know, if you go there, plus is really size eight or 10 and we're looking like no it's a 14. I think that's because you still have a lot of folks who use the padding to fit into mm -hmm. the product but you're also having coming up against like societies like transparency and imagery transparency and marketing so the what used to work 10 years ago mm -hmm. can no longer work today because also the types of clothes that we are requesting, the types mm -hmm. of looks and fits that we want don't always work for a padded body. They don't. And so now you're looking for models that are like, you know, celebratory in their body, who don't mind being called plus size, who knows it's like more of a, it's just a categorical, it's not a value kind mm -hmm. of like, you know, placement. It's like, okay, where do I go find the plus size clothes? Like, just like the petite girls ain't feeling like they're being, you know, shunned because they're short. Petite, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's just a categorical um, placement versus, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think you're starting to see more challenges on like people's ignorances, their, their um, assumptions, their biases, their um classism all the isms that they've replaced or are like attached with plus size fashion is being challenged and being mm -hmm. called out in every single way so where will we be it'll be interesting to see like where in five years we're having this conversation and what does that mean yeah now i want to touch on a few things that you talked about now i know there were some years ago that we did an interview and with you mentioning, like, there's so much more that we can do because we're still at the infancy. When we did that interview, you said we're still in the a lot of the first of what's going on in the plus community. Do you feel like we're a little bit past that or still kind of there with you saying we're still in the infancy of, you know, everything? Um, I think it's hard to say because, yes, there's still, I mean, think about it. Fashion Week is still, there's still, like, you know, you had Preciously, who just mm -hmm. walked for, um, I think it was like Versace. Was it Versace? Was it Versace? I can't remember. Um, but she just walked for a new brand or for a brand, mm. a high-end brand that had never featured. You're still having plus models as the faces of designers that have never included plus girls before. You're still mm -hmm. having, um, you know, numbers decline in terms of inclusion during fashion week. You're not seeing commercials that are always consistently in, um, um, integrating plus size models, especially when it comes mm -hmm. to beauty or accessories or lifestyle. So there's still a ways to go. Right. Because there's still the same old trope of promoting obesity. When, you know, when people I, I, realize, I laugh at that. I laugh I at mean, that. I mean, so if people really like understood just like how many people like this is like the everyday life, you know what I'm saying? But then mm -hmm. it directly challenges like the diet culture, it directly challenges the anti-aging culture, like it challenges all these like um, societal like structures that define beauty. Right. So, you know, now we're like, nah, dude, I'm beautiful right now. <laughs> Like you see those noon commercials, you're like, you know, the psychology of losing weight. And because I did this, I lost 42 pounds. Like, okay, girl. Great for you, but I'm good over here. 
Right. You know, so I think it's very interesting. You know, there's still a lot of work to be undone around like the mindset and the assumptions, the BMI, you know, like access, um, Mm -hmm. sustainability, like, you know, so we're, we've come a ways, but we have so much further to go. We do. You know what, just before I get to the other part of the question of what I wanted to ask, you mentioned about like the diet culture and Lizzo's somebody that really, you know, loves her body, shows it off and shows that she can do just about anything you can think of as a plus size woman. But you know, when she did the JJ Smith, like cleanse, she got kind of bashed. How do you feel about that? Like in the body positivity world of everything? I'm of two minds. Like, it's her body. Mm -hmm. Um, She mentioned afterwards how, like, she had drunk something. She had, like, been drinking. She had been doing Mm -hmm. some other stuff, and she just needed a cleanse. Right. Um, But then, you know, she is a, what do you call it, a a figure. Like, what do you call Mm -hmm. it? Like a a public figure a public figure so Mm -hmm. every type of post is going to be amplified or looked at like a little bit more um and scrutiny yeah Yeah. scrutiny. and so you know i'm of two minds because it's like you know live your life um but on the flip side it's like girl like i mean i could see you know if you already been doing smoothies like but you haven't and so it's right. hard to really 100% speak on that. Like, because I don't know her. I don't know her motivations. I don't understand, you know, like, so it's hard for me to say, oh, bad on you or oh, good on you. Like, that's, right. I mean, I was just like, ooh, I wish it could have, like, I wish that it was presented differently. Okay. Yeah. Like, it wasn't ter- It wasn't the worst thing she could do, but she may have been able to convey that message differently. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> perhaps well okay so the other part of my question where you discussed about you know it's been the black and brown people behind the plus scene for years and we kind of had to get to that with some brands this summer this past summer mm-hmm. with um talking about black lives matter and some of the messaging they put out mm-hmm. what was your reaction to that and how did you as a person that is of influence in the community do something about it i picked up the phone Mm. for me i had conversations one-on-one i actually start like i ended up bringing on if i have a one of these um um i have clients now that i consult and i'm talking about and breaking things down you know in a way that you know i'm challenging or helping or whatever to like you know really get them to get a grasp on so like from a diversity in the plus space the diversity in the influencer space i'm having these conversations right. so you know it wasn't just like within the plus space that i was having these conversations it was also in the influencer space like hmm. listen this is where you're messing up this is why you're being dragged i've known you for eight plus years and i'm going to tell you what's going on right and so, so you had to be me, very honest with people oh yeah I mean, yeah. for me, I feel like it's a little bit of my social responsibility right. as the, you know, how, like the access that I have to leverage it to really like make a forward, you know, moving impact. I might not always talk about it like in public. Oh yeah, I called this person and I told them that it, like, I'm going to have these conversations one-on-one and be like, listen, this is where you're fucking up. This <laughs> is what you need to do. Yeah. This is why you need to do it. And this is how you need to do it. You know, like even, um, I mean, we're, like it, it was, it was funny because like during Rona, I started the Speaking of Curves Facebook Live series. And right. I started that too, because for me, I was like, how can I help these businesses? Like, it's so important for folks <laughs> to know like they could support them because, mm-hmm. oh no, our Indies need to, su- our Indies need to survive. Right. Yeah. Like I'm having like yeah. this whole like existential crisis about like, oh no, what about the small businesses? So I started <laughs> this series so that people can mm-hmm. get to know the person behind the brand and hear how they're making it work. And like, 
other business owners have watched it and have learned their tips and, you know, like applying them so they can grow together. Right. Right. And I was like, but what can I do more? Right. So I'd already yeah. had this thought process already had like, this would be so cool if I could just, cause like everybody named mama started having grants. And so right. I'm like, damn, like, I want to do a grant type of thing for the community. And so a little bit after peak BLM, Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I reached out to Eloquy and I was like, listen, I know that you've been, you know, like you've been called to the table. They definitely were. Right. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to do this for the indie designers and I want to really like provide them with actionable resources and, 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 um, tools to help them for themselves. And also for me, like I've often challenged the, the mainstream brands or the, the bigger plus brands, instead of doing capsule collections with designers who would never even think twice in the plus space, you mm-hmm. should be, you know, bringing up some of these indie designers. So right. I approached them and it was really interesting because I then learned that they ended up creating Eloquy I created like Mm -hmm. this whole black creative project Mm -hmm. (laughs) that like, so the Kirby fashion, the, the TC, the the cultivate awards is like one of the pieces of their black creatives project. Wow. I was like, yo, you guys have to promote this project thing even more. Cause like, how am I just learning that you guys have been like, you know, um, working with, um, micro influencers per quarter like they call them cohorts so they're well, you know what they did they did come out with a questionnaire because i've worked with oh, no, 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 in the they, past no 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 but they literally since like september whoa have been having these quarterly cohorts mm-hmm. right and they're working with like micro influencers they're paying them they're doing all these things then like they linked up with the Black and Fashion Council to do a pledge for like, you know, this is where we are this day, like, and then next year, like, I don't know if you guys are know anything about the Black and Fashion Council, but they're like modeling their company after like how the LGBTQ scores different brands about like wow. how like, queer friendly they are. Mm-hmm. The Black and Fashion Council is, you know, um, you want- basically creating the same thing, but like how... Mm-hmm black friendly these brands are and so like they're holding them to task and there's all these different like things what do you call them like mm-hmm. uh, um qualifiers and like different mm-hmm. like areas and so I was like okay and then they made a pledge to like you know have a certain percent of um more people at headquarters of color and so I was like okay this works like y'all get it okay like you're you're getting it Right, you're, right. You're getting like, it. Like, like, you know, like every nobody's perfect, right? Nobody's like, oh, I've got this perfect, and everyone's still learning. And so, mm-hmm. for me to work with them, you know, they saw the importance like right away. Like they okay. saw it, and I was like, okay, cool. Let, let's move forward. And so we were going to announce it in September, October, but then they had just launched like something else, and then like then we had like the election and all the craziness and Black Friday and like. So we were like, let's wait and announce this in January. Cause like, you know, we could have announced it in September, but like, it was just like so many things going on in the world of Rona. Right. So then, you know, like, so that's why, um, you know, we just announced it this January for this May event. And it's really exciting because like, we've also got on like a couple of other partners and sponsors that we're going to be announcing. And some of them are like big ass names. Some of them are like, you know, like really cool business owners that have like amazing programming that they're donating to the winners. So it's just like, you know, like a series of like excite. There's just a lot of excitement around what additional elements can kind of come into play. And, Mm -hmm. you know, this is where, you know, my advocacy, my platform, paired with like my personal initiatives kind of like I was like we're gonna do something for these indie designers yeah the indie designers have been doing everything for the industry since time began so I mean it's amazing that you are advocating for them and that 
these brands are finally going to take notice. Right. And so it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, how many applicants we get and what kind of uh, um, turnout. And then, you know, it's really exciting because our finale will be live streamed. Um, wow. I know. And so uh, it's really exciting. <laughs> this is some good tea, honey. I'm like, girl, I'm waiting. Like, when does it get streamed? I want to watch. Yeah. So, you know, um, the, the live stream will be the finale. So it'll be like the finalists and they're showing their collections of what they have. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, the winners will be chosen from there. Wow. So can we talk a little bit about what the winners will receive or is that too much tea for us? Well, I mean, I can share what's already been in the press release. Like I can't. Okay. All right. I know you can't give me the exclusive, but you know, I'm gonna come back for it. Right. I'm here for it. I guess you, I got you. Yeah. So like, you know, so it's a, so the the winner will get like a $10,000 scholarship prizing with the capsule Mm -hmm. collection, with a year of mentorship, like in understanding every single facet that goes into a clothing line. Um, mm-hmm. And then the runners up will get uh, a $2,500 um, stipend or you know scholarship, as well as like um, all three of them will get um, a variety of different pricing from like lawyer consultations to um, marketing to um, courses on learning how to create content um right. some credits at some major places too so it's like really actionable like every type of partner is bringing something that's going to directly impact the bottom line of the designer's business wow and you know what you need that because sometimes when you're a designer you're not thinking about everything else exactly. that goes into the business exactly. you are the creator of the line that's what you love and you're not thinking about all that other stuff that goes into it. So this type of mentorship mm-hmm. is something that is needed, I think, for indie designers because they can only do but so much by themselves. And it does take a lot of, sometimes it takes a lot of capital to have someone to do all these other things for exactly. you. Exactly. This is amazing. I am excited. When I saw you first post about it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I was so happy that you were partnering with Ellie because as a brand, I love them, you know, being here in the DMV, that was where they opened their first brick and mortar. And I'm, I was so sad to see them go because they, if you audience, if you've ever been to an Ellie store, if they were ever in your area, they were all about doing more in the community though. They didn't just, it wasn't just about coming and buy some clothes. The events that they even had were, you know, the events that they even had were great. I worked with them so much and the way they just highlighted people in the community in that area, I thought was special. Aww. I did. I did. So I'm, I'm happy that they want to, you know, be better at making sure they're inclusive with everyone right. who supports them. Right. And, you know, and one of the things that I also appreciated that is like, our event wasn't like the only thing that they're doing, right? right? It's like our event sits in, you know, a series of like their initiatives. I was like, y'all gotta promote this more. Like folks need to yeah. know what you're doing in response to being, <laughs> I'm just saying like, I mean, do people know? You know, do I don't know. know. I don't think everybody knows. I didn't know right. everything that they were doing. I mean, like I said, when they, when, they first got backlash about their post about Black Lives Matter. I do remember, like I said, they sent out a survey to consumers about like how they could be better. And then they did come out and they they did like one email, but how many people clicked on that email to know that they would be doing some of that work? And, you know, people are just about like, it's like you said, it's been so much going on in Arona. How many people really paid attention to it as opposed to them actually promoting what exactly they're doing and so it's good that you said something to them about it and that you have highlighted this cultivate award and what they're doing here i i'm excited i'm excited because for me being a person who loves fashion and loves the plus industry i'm like i can't wait i cannot I wait I'm, I'm excited too and so I, who knows like you know i'm excited to see like i've had a couple of other conversations this week with like potential partners and so just waiting to see because i'm like i'm going for the moon because if i miss i'm amongst the stars like let's i know that's right actionable like resources and and 
you know, for me, it's just like, I, I'm literally going after the brands I wish I had relationships with, like, when I first started, because like, Mm -hmm. like, I didn't know what I didn't know. And because I didn't know what I didn't know, like, I made mistakes, like, or I was led by insecurity or fears or whatever those things are. And I want, you know, to be able to best to better empower. Mm -hmm. And so like, even this year, when we talk about like our theme is elevate, like we're looking, I'm, I'm looking at like all the different ways that I can help elevate different parts of the community. And so, you know, like we'll have later this year, a, um, a writing fellowship. Oh, really? Yeah. And so it's like, you know, there's, different things that are, you know, coming along that we're creating that are really considering um, different parts of the community in ways that we can help, you know, and at least bring attention to. Yeah, because there's so much in the industry. It's more than just a model or blogger. We've got the photographers. We've got the people who do the media. We've got, you know, so much, the people like plus size makeup artists or hairstylists and just every little inch of what creates the events that we've been to pre-Rona and what we will go to when Rona gets out of hand. <laughs> but listen, I don't even know when they say Rona is okay. I'm not going nowhere. I'm like, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I'm you don't trust it. I don't know. I mean, I'll give it a part. I'll give it a little while. And then I'm probably going to go out. I'm, I've got the Rona fatigue. Someone's like, here. Someone's like, am I going to see you in June? I was like, I don't know. Why are you? <laughs> Well, we got to make sure everybody, you know, does what they need to do. Listen, I'm down here in freaking Georgia. These fools out here at the strip club, at the club <laughs> club, at, you know. The they club. are. I've seen, I saw the pictures of what so, New Year's Eve and it was like, I'm going oh nowhere. my God. I'm going nowhere until, um, you know, I need Biden to just like shut things down just so we could be like, you know, still for a second. Yeah. Let's see what he does after these first 100 days if he feels like he needs to do it. He's already done more in his first 30 days <laughs> than his predecessor. Listen, I mean, he done ordered a whole new 200 million new uh, vaccines. So, yeah, like, he- everybody can be, I'm like, okay, sir, come through. <laughs> he wants us out now i will say being that i'm in the political world i do know a little bit about biden he's been in this game for a while he knows how to negotiate and he's not afraid he that knows what he can do and you know what and 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 miss uh miss harris you know she's from california woot hey girl like mm-hmm. you know i voted for her like you know back in san francisco area mm-hmm. so she ain't scared either Mm-mm. Neither one of them. Is, so, their motto should be, I ain't never scared. Oh, I ain't I never scared. No, no, no. They are not scared. So I feel like we will we will be out of this and we will get to events sometime, if not this year, 2022. You know, I, think, I think I think we're all gonna be shell shocked. We ain't going nowhere this year. Oh no, I don't think go, this year, but 2022. Anywhere, that part, everybody gonna be like, <laughs> gone. Like, girl, no, I, I, everybody probably already like trying to buy up uh, tickets and stuff, trying to get them for low prices. Okay, but I'm trying to have a good sleigh. This is what I, I miss the sleighs, honey. I miss a good, honey, what I'm wearing that day to the event. What's the letters I'm wearing? What shoes? What, what, what hair? I'm gonna have I'm like, what kind of shoes? What comfort shoes can I wear? Like, Honey, if anybody has ever seen you at your event, she'd be like, come down real cute, be a little thing. <laughs> Marie comes down, takes her pictures with people. And the next thing you know, you see her in some tennis shoes walking around like, all right, what we need to do? <laughs> I mean, like, I don't even I'm think gonna I'm going to be comfortable you. with it. I was like in tennis shoes and flats the whole time. I know, I know. We had to tell you, child, put on some, some heels. Do I don't know. I'm like, no, you see me running around? <laughs> I am a Virgo with a cat moon. You gonna tell me to sit down? <laughs> no. Oh gosh, no. You gonna be up and about Come making on. business work. I'm just well, saying. well, you know, I, with everything we've talked about today, I mean, I can just see, like I said, what we talked about in the very beginning, you empowering people, you pushing people forward. And it's it speaks to your own success. You know, it does because you're not afraid to help someone else out. You're not afraid to push someone else along knowing that 
you still have your own and it's not going to mess with what you're doing. And I think a lot of people sometimes get scared of that. Yeah. One candle, you know, a candle lights another candle doesn't dim that other person's light. Yeah, it doesn't. It does not. So to wrap things up, I want you to say, answer two questions for me. One, what do you have coming with your brand that you already haven't mentioned? And two, what advice could you give to someone in the industry that's struggling right now? Um, we are going through a redesign. Oh, really? I'm so excited. We're getting a custom site built um, with some new fancy like uh, additions. Mm -hmm. Um, so I won't give it all away, but like, definitely I'm really excited about this. Like I've literally been spending almost every other day, um, giving feedback on like little things and little tweaks, um, definitely designed with mobile first in mind, um, Mm -hmm. and all those different elements. So yeah, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Um, two, uh, your second question, um, advice for someone someone struggling. struggling. Yeah, like an um, influencer, blogger, right. or someone who's so really I, trying to have some time. Yeah, I think it's really important to give yourself grace. Mm-hmm. I, keep re- I keep saying this to my indies and other business owners I talk to. It's really important to find and give grace to yourself because it's so easy to spiral down and, mm-hmm. and give yourself a break. Like, I'm quick for, like, you got me here at my desk longer than I'm normally ever at my desk. But Mm. I know that this is a one-time thing versus like an everyday thing. I've been up since six o'clock this morning. I'm Mm. not going to be sitting at my desk at six o'clock at night. Not working, no ma'am. So I, you know, I give myself grace. If if I'm having a shitty day, Mm -hmm. I get take my behind up from the cap, from the um, computer and go sit on the couch. I give Mm -hmm. myself grace to do that, to just allow myself to process my emotions and my feelings. And also so that I'm not living in survival mode because survival mode, you will make decisions and choices that may not always be the best, but because of where you find yourself emotionally and mentally, like you feel like you have to. So for me, like I always say, extend and find yourself grace. I like that because you don't think about that when you're going through your struggles. You're like, I have to do everything now or else. And you don't think maybe I need to take a break, give myself some grace and then go back to it when I'm, when I'm better. Right. And not beat yourself up. Like we are going through literal unprecedented times. It's literally. I keep keep trying to tell people I want to get back to precedented times. Because right. I'm tired of these unprecedented <laughs> times. Right. When do we get back to precedented right. times? And, and, and with that, like, we're going to go through things and experience. Businesses are trying to figure shit out. Like, people are trying to figure things out. Couples who were married are like, we're done. Like, you yeah. have, like, you're seeing so many things, like, literally hit a stress point. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so it's, it's, and then, you know, we have the craziest leader ever, and, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, like, mm-hmm. and then we're dealing with racial tension and, 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 and companies like going out of business. It's, it's, it's felt like the end of times-ish. Yeah, so it did. really important to give yourself grace. So what if you can't finish something right now? Like, I'd rather you take a break, woo-saw, and when your mind is right, come back and knock it out versus like trying to knock it out and having to redo it all over again because you don't mess it up because you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's really important to give yourself grace. That's one thing that I, I definitely like my therapist, like had taught me how to learn how to mother myself. Ooh. And so, yeah. you know, tell myself it's okay, Marie. Like it's okay. Yeah. And sometimes that's all you need. It's okay. It's okay. Oh my gosh. That, I love that last little tidbit. Thank you so much for coming on to share. And like I said, I just had to highlight someone in the, in the plus industry that I've worked with plenty of times, but that I know elevates herself, but elevates others around her and empowers people. You are a great trailblazer. 
And I can't wait to see you and work with you again in person. Oh, it's been forever, literally. I know, but I wish you all the best. And with the Cultivate Award, audience, if you want to know more about it, check it out on the Curvy Fashionista page. Go find it. If you know someone in that indie space that could, you know, be a part of this, please extend it to them and get them more information. And I know that if they have questions, they can contact you, you know, contact you about what's going on with it. So thank you so much for everything. Thank you so much for having me, Annie. Yes. All right, loves. Thank you for listening to another episode of Tea Time with Monica. Bye, love.